So today we're going to be covering 10 fragrances that were basically built and designed to please the masses. And when you take a look at the big picture here, that's kind of what everyone wants. You know, when you're getting into fragrances, you start collecting, you start picking things up. That's one of the most popular, uh, you know, questions that I get asked constantly in the comments is, oh, would this fragrance smell good? Would this get me compliments? This and that, right? It, it's a, a major focus for people. And I think it's a, a motivator for people to start getting into this hobby in the first place. Now, after you get into the hobby, and you, you build up a, a collection of fragrances that are mass pleasers, you may find yourself gravitating towards things that are a bit more challenging. You start to fall in love with uh, perfumery and, and composition and how things really blend together, but you don't really start out that way. I would say for most people, that's not what they're caring about. So if you're wanting to start building up a collection, if you're wanting to get into fragrances, this would be a good place to start because these are all mass pleasing. They're not going to scare you away. You're not going to be wearing things that would maybe be offensive to people around you to where you'd be like, okay, you know, I give up. I don't want to, to get these negative reactions anymore. Uh, really, for the most part, if you, you, if you were to get a negative reaction with these, it would be like a, a once in a lifetime type of thing. Like that's not going to happen. All of these here are about as mass pleasing as you can get. And that's the goal behind this one. If you're after compliments, if you're after things that are easy to wear, easy to pull off, these are going to be for you. I will link them down below to discounters so you can check them out at a price below retail. Always recommend you going that direction. Um, if you Google a lot of these, you'll see retail price. And if I'm referencing prices in here, I'm usually not going to be referencing the retail price. I'm referencing the discounted price because a lot of these you could get for a, a price below $50 and retail is not $50. It's 80 plus. So make sure you use those links and we're just going to dive right into it. We're going to start off right here. Kenneth Cole, Mankind Legacy. So we've got fir, amorous, orange, and cedarwood as some of the main notes. One that I've really been enjoying here lately. You know, it's a cheapy, I believe, $30, $40 range online. Very obtainable. One that's super easy to throw into your cart when you're making a purchase. And you'll find when you first spray this one on and you try it for the first time, it has this bright, uplifting kind of a vibrance to it. You know, very fresh here. Not going to be a, a wintertime scent. Definitely more for the warmer weather, spring and summer, which is kind of what we're moving into here. So it also has this kind of wispy, airy, light brightness about it as well. You know, while it may seem basic and seem generic, and to some extent it is very similar to some other things out there, just kind of a broad spectrum, it's still kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of stands on its own, has its own unique thing going on here. Very mass pleasing, very versatile, very easy to wear, and to top it all off, it's actually not a bad performer either. It's a really nice pickup for not a lot of money, and it gets the job done for sure. And I should mention that it gets the job done better than your Axe body sprays and your Nautica blues and your, your super, super basic fragrances. I did try to go through and kind of take a step or two above those. So these are going to get the job done and then some. Next up, we have Polo Deep Blue, and this is going to be the Parfum. So this will be kind of the uh, Ambroxan Mango uh, C Notes version of Polo Blue. So there are bits and pieces of Polo Blue and, and some of the other flankers in the line in here. But, of course, with the heavy Ambroxan, which gives it, of course, that blue fragrance smell that some of us love, some of us despise. So uh, just throwing that out there right now, if you're not into blue fragrance, you're probably not gonna be into this one. Now I should clarify, it doesn't smell necessarily like any one other blue fragrance. So I'm not saying that this smells like Sauvage or Dylan Blue or Aqua Atlantique or Blue de Chanel. I'm not saying that it does, but it does fit into that category. So kind of depends on what you're after here. I like this one a lot and I gravitate towards this one because it does have some of that classic polo blue feel, which is a, a very classy, refined, kind of gentleman's fragrance, you know, it just has a modernized take. I like the mango note in here. It kind of gives it this sweet 
fruity undertone kind of underneath everything else going on. You pick up on it a little bit, which gives it a uniqueness. All around, it's a scent that I would think would be impossible to offend someone with. Unless you were to go with like 100 sprays of this and you're just completely filling the entire room with your scent, which no one really wants. If you don't do that, you're going to get positive feedback from this one. You're going to get good performance as well. At least I do. You know, it is a parfum. And uh, all around, for the price, about $60 for a tester with cap online, it's very hard to beat. Okay, next up, Valentino Womo Born in Roma. It does have a cap. So that's one thing you'll want to take note here when you pick these up. And the reason why I say that is if you have any of the other Valentino Womo fragrances, they don't have a cap. It basically looks just like this, but you push down right here and there's an atomizer and that's it. No cap at all. Uh, I don't know what their reasoning was behind going to a cap for the Born and Romas, but they did. So uh, something if interesting. I kind of like it, honestly. And the reason why is because when you have a cap, you're able to take the cap off and smell and get a good idea of what the scent smells like in the dry down. When you have something that is basically always exposed like this or like the regular Valentino Womos, it doesn't retain any smell. So literally the only way you can smell it is to spray it and then you're getting the opening. So you would have to let that dry down on the tester strip to get that dry down again. So in a way, I, I do like this. Mineral notes, violet leaf, ginger, and sea salt are some of the main notes. So look, I was a little bit of a tough critic on this when it first came out. Not as bad as I was on Valentino Womo Born in Roma Yellow Dream. And I still kind of, uh, you know, I, it's not my favorite Yellow Dream. I really just don't like the name. Very off-putting when you really think about it. Um, Scent-wise, you know, it, it doesn't hype me up, but it still is a mass pleaser. But between Born in Romo Yellow Dream and just Born in Roma, I would still take this one. And we're just talking about scent. I'm not letting the name or anything influence me here. I would still take this one because it has kind of bits and pieces of this playful and Victus Aqua smell. You know, a little bit of a bubblegummy nature about it, which I like. Um, I'm a big fan of fragrances like that. I'm almost partial to them. Even though they're super boring to a lot of people and they're common, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird, but I still dig them. You know, it's still something where I smell it and I'm like, you know what? That smells playful and fun. And it's one that I can get down with. And this one here would be a great mass pleaser. It would be hard to offend people with this one. And when you actually go through and look at the reviews online, a lot of people say the same thing. You, you got to sift through because a lot of people are saying that they hate it. But when you get to the people who are, are enjoying it and, and testing it out in the field, uh, the reactions on this one is crazy. How are we doing on time? We're doing actually very slow. Let's pick this one up. Hugo Boss reversed. We've got bergamot. We've got vetiver, grapefruit, rosemary. Smells amazing. I brought some attention to this one back in the day, a couple summers ago. Has a little bit of an Elysium smell. Not 100%, but maybe 70% or so. You know, it's got that vibrance, all of citruses in there, some of the aromatics, and then this nice clean vetiver. Elysium also is all about the vetiver, the citrus, the aromatics. There are some similarities, not one-to-one -one clone, but similar, more so than not, I would say. What's nice about this one is it's $35, $40 online. It's a good performer, and I've also said this many times, but when you smell this and then you smell all of the other Hugo Boss canteen style bottles with you know this style of cap and everything, this smells like it doesn't belong. This is so ahead of everything else in terms of quality, uniqueness, composition, and performance. But I really do think it's a diamond in the rough. I do stick with that. I really like this fragrance. My girlfriend loves it. It's one that I recommend to beginners and it's a great mass pleaser. So let's go ahead and go right here next. Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum Intense. This is not uh, the gold version, of course. This is just the intent. It's getting to the point where it's a little bit confusing, so we'll try to make it simple. Look for this bottle right here. It's basically what you're after. So this one has cashmere in. It's got grapefruit, uh, benzoin, cardamom. Smells very nice. So this is another one where I was a little bit tough on it in the beginning, and granted that was because it, it strays so far from the original DNA. So I've learned that I need to separate 
these flankers from the original DNA to really give them a fighting chance because when you spray this one and then you smell the original EDT or EDP, they're so far away where it's like, okay, this there's no relation other than them sharing cardamom and stuff, no relation. So when I step back and I just evaluate the scent by itself, not comparing it to other things, you know, I've realized that it, it does bring something to the table. It brings this modern mass appeal that a lot of people do like. You know, I think cashmere is kind of becoming the next ambroxan, so to speak. Uh, something that's very popular, something that a lot of people enjoy, both the wearers, um, you know, out in the real world, and also the people that are around them. It's a note or aroma chemical that is just working very well. I think that's going to continue to grow and grow. And it's used heavily in here. You get a bit of a creaminess, a little bit of a sweetness. Again, very, very modern smelling. One that a lot of guys would like if you're a bit younger and you want something that's kind of trendy and hip that still smells great. Calvin Klein Defy. So this is their newest one here. And what I love about this so much is that they have started a new line. Like seriously, this is super exciting. Instead of just doing another Eternity Flanker or another uh, CK1 Summer or, uh, you know, other limited edition, they are giving us a brand new line. And of course, we know it's Calvin Klein. So, you know, a bunch of flankers are going to stem off of this one. But can I be mad? Not really. And the reason why is because they are off to a great start with Defy. If this was a complete failure right off the bat, I would be like, oh, here we go. A bunch of flankers based off of this one, which isn't that good. But it is actually very good. I've done videos on this one. I've got a full review recorded. I don't know if it's out yet by the time you're watching this, but I have done a first impressions uh, regardless. Here's what's the problem is that when you first spray it on, it smells a bit like YSLY EDP, YSLY Live, kind of that fruity bubble gummy thing going on. And people will immediately scrub it off. But what I want you to know is that it's not like that the whole time. As soon as you get into the mid and dry down, it's vetiver. This is their take on a vetiver fragrance, and it's very, very well done. Bergamot, vetiver, lavender, and amber are some of the main notes. Yeah, seriously. Uh, give it some time. Let it dry down because it's a very clean, uh, refined, masculine, and, and slightly soapy vetiver that smells amazing. If you like vetiver fragrances, you will like this one, but you have to let it get to the dry down. I've come so far with this one. Uh, you know, I, I liked it a lot in the first impressions, but even now as I've been testing it more, I'm like, okay, there's something, something good here. Like they're onto something very pleasant, very easy to wear. It's a good performer. And I have to admit, I'm excited for all the flankers. So I did not plan this on purpose, but it just happened. We've got YSLY, EDP, Tonka Bean, Amber Wood, Sage, Lavender, I mean, you know. Typical note breakdown. Like when I smell them side by side, opening wise, they're similar. Not exactly the same. Uh, YSLY EDP, much more fruity, bright. Uh, with Defy, you do get more of that vetiver up front. So again, we're not talking one to one clones off the opening here, but definitely similar. So just something to keep in mind. But when I say that this stuff here is engineered and designed for mass appeal, that's an understatement. Because when you look at what this one is doing on all of the retailers and discounters, it's at the top of the best selling. Pretty close. I mean, discounters, it, it's up there. It's not quite as much because there's like Eros and Aqua de Joe, which has been out for a long time. This one's still relatively new. It's climbing the charts. And again, when you look at the retailers, Macy's, Sephora, Ulta, it's got some of the most reviews. It's one of the best sellers. This stuff is going absolutely wild. Whether you are seeing that or not, it's happening and it's amazing. It's crazy, but it's still so cool to see. And that shows you where the market is. You know, when you take a look at the, the people outside of the community, this is the stuff that works. And that's why people are trying to replicate it to some extent more than others, but it works well. And uh, I mean, this is really kind of the next big Dior Sauvage. It really is. So let's go to this one next. One Million Lucky Plum Hazelnut and uh, 
We've also got aldehydes, honey. It's a very strange note breakdown because you have a bunch of fresh and a bunch of sweet and uh, it can confuse people. It kind of confused me at first. I'm like, okay, so what is this fragrance trying to be? And then I realized that it, it doesn't necessarily need to be anything. It just needs to smell good and people need to like it. And that's exactly what it does. So I guess it needs to be a mass pleaser. And it is. It has that combination of fresh and sweet. And things like that work so well because some people like fresh only. Some people like sweet only. So when you combine them both, you kind of have a little bit of both worlds. And some people also like a mixture of fresh and sweet. And this is that. So it appeals to a super broad audience. It's a good performer. It's uh, for the price, great quality, uh, especially for the lime. It, to some extent, believe it or not, is kind of unique. It's a different blend. It's a different mixture of notes here, and it works very well. Next up, second to last, Bulgari Man Glacial Essence. So we've got clear wood, juniper berries, musk, and cedar wood. Uh, if you've smelled this one before, you will immediately know that it is kind of a mass pleaser. And I don't mean kind of lightly. I mean, it is a big time mass pleaser because it uh, it is the most stripped back, kind of a bare bones, modernized take on a scent from the entire line. I love the whole lineup and I actually really like this one as well. So it may sound like I'm ragging on it and I don't mean any of this in a bad way, but it's literally the truth. When you take a look at something like Terra Essence, Wood Neroli, um, you know, there's also uh, Wood Essence. I don't know, what's another one that's a little bit daring? Uh, I don't know, even maybe the original Bulgari Man. Um, you know, all of those there, they all have a, a different kind of approach about them where not every single person would like them. This, out of everything, is the one scent where it's like I could be confident and say, oh yeah, you wear this one out. Basically, everyone is going to, at the minimum, think it smells good. If you wear Terra Essence out, you're looking at some different odds there. So from the entire line, this is going to be your big mass pleaser. Uh, it's going to be one that's the most modern, the most trendy, and that's what a lot of people are after. And I wanted to end this video with an OG. Let's pay our respect real quick, because uh, if it wasn't for this fragrance, where would we even be? Like, seriously, think about that. A lot of people will be like, oh, we would be in a better spot because this fragrance spawned a bunch of other types of fragrances, some of which we talked about in this video. But I disagree. I think this fragrance, uh, it really helped the direction of men's perfumery. And a lot of people would agree as well. Also, I just want to say, it's one that I still wear often. You know, it's one that I enjoy. It's one that I think is great. And uh, again, a lot of people think the same. And that is Blue de Chanel. This here is the Eau de Parfum. Grapefruit, incense, amber, and lemon are some of the main notes. It's citrusy, it's smoky, it's masculine. Uh, a little bit of a woodiness in the base. I want to spray it again. It's uh, a very happy scent for me. One that I smell and I just go, okay, I understand what the hype is all about. It is built, designed, and engineered for mass appeal, and it does that in the best possible way. I really don't even need to spend any more time on it. People know this already. So there you go. Last fragrance for this video, paying our respects to Blue de Chanel. That's going to do it for me, guys. That is 10 fragrances that are basically built and designed for compliments, for mass appeal, whatever you want to call it. They work great and... They probably always will work very well. Links to these will be down below a discounter, so you can check them out at a price below retail. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.